One of the things that I realized in my whole journey experience is that opportunities, they're not handed to you. You have to go out and search for them. At Solbridge, again, everything was very different at Solbridge. It was a business school, it was just one building, so it was easier for me to make uh, a lot of friends, and it was truly, truly international. As in, they say like, uh, I think 60, more than 50 different nationalities are studying at Solbridge, which is, which is true. Because at Solbridge, I have met or befriended or become friends with like countries that I never knew existed. The Istan countries, for instance, like Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, I was, I didn't, I, you know, my bad geography, I didn't really know about them, but I met amazing best friends from these countries, uh, from Lithuania, Hungary, uh, uh, French, uh, France, <laughs> like all over the world. It was, it was truly international for me. So academically, this, the courses itself for me, as a, like a, for my first year, for instance, it was, it was very easy. Uh, for, maybe it was because of my mechanical background, mechanical engineering background, but it wasn't the, as hard. Uh, the challenging part was the grading system. So it was the curve system, meaning that only 30% of the class can get A+. As for me, I need to get 100% scholarship because I could not afford it the next semester. So in order to get 100% scholarship, I had to get A plus in all the courses. So what do I do? I studied hard. The, the courses weren't as hard because I was very interested. I became very interested in business. So it wasn't just theory that I was learning. One of the things that made me change from mechanical engineering to business was mechanical engineering, although I'm very interested in robotics. I, it was more a theory for me that I couldn't put it into practice in my head. However, when I came to uh, studying business, I was like, huh, okay, I can apply it to this. Oh yeah, if this happens, then that. So that's why it was very interesting for me. And uh, I love doing presentations and it got me to uh, really uh, explore my public speaking skills, my presentation skills, communicating with people from different cultures. Uh, so it was amazing. So in my first year, I was an associate student council. I had a roommate, my first uh, non-Ethiopian roommate. So I had a Russian roommate. She was amazing. She's a dancer and she's, she's very cool. Her name is Christina, <laughs> if I could mention her name. She was very cool and we had a great time. Uh, and then in the next semester, that was also when my life changed, when I became uh, an adult. Because I moved out of the dorms and I had my own house. Bear in mind that when I was in Ethiopia, uh, the only private space that I had was my bed. My tiny bed, just like this. Uh, because I had to share a room with my brother. So I never even had my own room. And me, like in like three years, you know, I have my own house. Okay, not house, but uh, an apartment. I had my own apartment. I didn't even have my own bed, my own bedroom, but I had my own room. And it was a big, big change for me. Uh, I had to finance my, I had to manage all my finances. I took on part-time jobs at school and outside. Uh, I taught English. I was a research assistant to uh, to professors, and I have I have grown a lot. One of the things that I realized in my whole journey experience is that opportunities they're not handed to you. You have to go out, search, and search for them. Uh, for some reason, when I came to South Korea, uh, or especially when I entered Solbridge, I thought you know. They're gonna give me internship, they're gonna give me jobs, they're gonna pay me money. But no, college life or university life is exactly how you make it. There are opportunities, especially in Solbridge that I was in. There are many opportunities to travel around, to study abroad again, uh, in competitions, 
work opportunities, there are opportunities there, but you yourself need to go out, make connections with uh, different professors or people or guest lecturers or students and you need to go and search research for them and apply for them. You need to go above and beyond if it is something that you really want to. And that's exactly what I did when I went to my fourth university, which is exchange program to the University of Porto in Portugal. Like, I don't even know how to explain this. It was the best time of my life. I, it literally felt, feels like a, a dream like even when I think when I think about it, I just travel to a lot of places alone and I meet like strangers that became my family and I lived with I really don't know how to explain it. Like okay, okay, relax. Alright, so let me tell you how I went to an exchange program. Since I was a little girl, I really wanted to travel the world. For me, traveling the world is like uh, is like, you know, reading all parts of the book rather than just staying in one page. In Solbridge, the coolest opportunity is you can either do a dual degree, so learn two years in Solbridge and two years in university of your choice, like you can learn the, the other two years in Canada or in Australia or in China, or you can do exchange programs. That's what I did. I couldn't do dual degree because I couldn't afford it. An exchange program, I really wanted to go for six months to another country, like the idea of it was like, whoa, really, can I do it? I really wanted to do, but I didn't have any money. So unless it was sponsored, I couldn't have enough money to go to another country and stay there for six months. At least when I'm in Korea, I am able to afford it because I have part-time jobs. And oh, also, I also have scholarship, uh, Wujong Foundation scholarship. So, that, so because of that, like I can afford my life here. So what what I did was I researched a lot. My first choice was Brazil or Latin America, like or Spain, because I just love that culture, and it it resonates with my personality. So I really am very interested in that. So that's where I looked for. But I couldn't find scholarships. I mean, uh, yeah, like scholarships or grants that will give me money to travel uh, to learn at another university. So I just, uh, I went to the fifth floor like 100 times and asked her, okay, so this university, it has this kind of grant, but how is it? Can I afford it? Blah, 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 blah. And so me and my friend, we, yeah, I was going with Galila as well, right? So me and my friend, she wants Fran France, and uh, I wanted Spain. So we decided to go to Brazil because one, it was the, the one of the cheapest places that we could, we could afford. And two, yeah, it will, it's, it's different from, it's a different continent. So we wanted to go to a different continent. Uh, so we talked with a, a, a professor that is responsible for this. And we asked him, we really want to go abroad, but we don't have any money. So where should we go? And he was from Brazil. So he was telling us good things about Brazil and it's cheap. And he told us that the, the safest part of the, the safest uh, region that we were going, it was an island, it was perfect. Still, we didn't have enough money, but we were so excited. So, but we went there and asked her, huh, "Are there other universities that that uh, that allows that gives us scholarships for exchange program?" And then he was like, "Wait a minute, could we asked him like hundred times?" So he's like, hmm, "Wait a minute, I think there's an email about Erasmus exchange program in Portugal. Are you interested?" I was like, "Yeah, Portugal. We love Portugal. Let's go." And luckily. We were, me and my friend were the only two persons who got accepted from South Korea to, for this Erasmus uh, exchange program grant. So, it really looks like a movie, like even for me, like, they covered our plane ticket and they gave us monthly stipend of around 800 euros. I was like, what? When, even when I heard this thing existed, I was like, are you sure? I mean, why would they do it to us? But I got accepted. And I wasn't alone, I was with my friends, so we were like, whoa! In 2019, from January until June, June July, we, we went to Portugal to do this six-month, uh, five-month exchange program. And it was a total turnaround from my life. I became very exposed to uh, leaving alone, managing my finances, uh, leaving, uh, just 
building myself personally and it was a time for me to discover like bits and bits of little that I never knew existed. I never knew that I could, you know, go out just go out alone to uh, to an event and talk with like five different people and then just end up making them my friends. I didn't know I could do that. I was I was uh, I was an introvert, but like it was very different. The amazing part of my my study abroad in Portugal was that I got to live with seven different people. Three Italians, uh, one from uh, Slovakia, one from Poland, and the other from Czech Republic, and other from Ethiopia. So every time we ate uh, different food from different countries, so we, we cooked fur for them, injera, uh, they cooked like uh, their own traditional food for us, it was amazing and I always wanted to, to travel right now I wasn't financially restricted I understand. Uh, and I was like why not so I traveled uh, around Greece Italy with solo and I traveled with my my best friend and another friend that was from our same school in Korea so we traveled to Belgium Germany like all over the place and I made strangers there that really became my family and we traveled around Europe with them as well and just lived with them and even now we text with my roommates from from Portugal back to Solbridge and back to my graduation so after I came back from that exchange program I really felt like a different person I was able I was more confident because I have traveled alone for two weeks in a country that I never knew, like I only knew on movies or on in internet, but I went there. I studied at hostels and made friends there. I, I was backpacking. I lived in my backpack for two weeks. It was it was a crazy experience. So after I came back to Solbridge, uh, I was more confident. So I joined debate de uh, debate uh, club. It was a place where I grew because. Uh, I was more, I knew more about the world through debate club, if that makes sense. I argued uh, four topics that I didn't know was happening, like in Israel or or in, in, in Uganda. Like, I had to know about countries that, you know, that aren't very famous like it wasn't because you know we learn about us anything that you search the first thing is about us did this and that but through debate i, I debated four topics that were very controversial for me as well and for my culture because my culture is very conservative and because of debate i was more open-minded to to uh, get myself out there and just do do that uh also, I participated in various business plan competitions from people from all over the world. I was very, very active and that helped me to create more connections and to make my life at Solbridge amazing. Honestly, my life, the whole in Korea, right now I'm just telling you the good parts. It's always a roller coaster. There are ups and downs wherever you are in any time uh, phase of your life. Uh, there were times that I cried every night. Uh, because I was feeling lonely and there were times that I was very broke and I was very anxious like I don't know what to do about money uh, however it's just a roller coaster you know they you don't you don't just go down there are times that you go up um, and through this video it's just the story time of my university journey experience so if you like this video I mean, like it uh, and subscribe if you want to see more about uh, life in Korea in general and I'll probably be making a specific a, a video for each universities and generally life how life is in Korea so if you do like it or if there are topics that you want me to talk about if you are interested in studying abroad just uh, type down on the comment and let me know uh, what you want to see more of and yeah I am done